Hey everybody, I want to show you a uh, quick setup for a grunt uh, auto compiling and watching workflow uh, for Magento 2. Some prerequisites to this video, you need to have Magento 2 up and running. You see that over here on my side of the screen. Uh, I have, you can run it on a virtualized container, uh, on Vagrant, whatever you want, uh, Docker if you want. As long as you have access to a command line uh, from which to run node commands, you're good to go. Uh, you need a custom theme created and set as your storefront. Here I have a, uh, a child theme that extends a base theme of mine. Uh, so if you need instructions on how to do that, just search their guides, uh, something online. This kind of looks ugly just because I've been messing with it. Don't worry about it. Uh, you need N98 Mage Run 2 installed, which you can go to uh, find on github.com slash netz98 slash n98 dash mage run 2. Uh, and then you just brew it. Or if you are on uh, uh, Mac, you can just do, and you have homebrew installed, you can just do brew install n98 dash mage run 2. And then you have tons of powerful commands uh, at your fingertips for uh, Gento 2. So, um, before we get started, I just wanted to show you a quick thing, a, a structure or, or a demo of how themes are laid out in Magento 2. So your themes, here are mine, here's my namespace, and then here are my, here are my two themes. This is my, uh, my parent theme, this is my child theme. Uh, you define your entry points for your CSS. Uh, Magento 2 has three set up for you. Uh, which are, are, sorry, which are in the blank, you can find them uh, in the layout. Well, let me just show you where they are. There's styles L.less, which is mobile, or I'm sorry, desktop for L being large. Uh, and then there's styles M, which is mobile styles. And then there's print for print styles. Uh, and then from these, uh, you import things and all of uh, Magento will use this as the entry point into building the entire style sheet that will spit out as like print.css, styles l.css, and styles m.css, uh, and so on and so forth. I don't like that structure. Uh, that's just me. You can leave that if you want. But what I ended up doing in my base theme was uh, modifying their layout to remove, uh, that's the wrong one, to remove their default styles um, and add my own, which is just a, a general uh, uh, styles.css file. Um, which is my, my single point of entry for the site's uh, CSS. Yeah. If you want some info on at magento underscore import, uh, check out their docs. Basically, it just turns uh, that into that with uh, an eye to the fallback of Magento. So that's the structure. What, what happens in my base theme is I have all of, I have this structure of a directory uh, and I do like an include from here, um, but what Magento Magento kind of doesn't care as much about the the parent theme as it does the child theme. So this is my actual theme, um, and here anything that as a child anything uh, that doesn't exist here is pulled from parent themes, meaning that I ha and, and this includes the stuff that's uh, thrown into the theme from modules. Um, but anything I have in this base theme, it's going to actually, when you see it in the cache in the pub directory, it's going to be pulled into here unless it already exists. So my colors for my theme here are set up here in this uh, colors theme dot less file. Um, and then all of my other um, CSS uses these color main, color main dark, color secondary. That's just one way to set it up. But if you want to think about how you can best utilize the existing Magento 2 styles, then I keep an eye towards that. Uh, but I like to I like starting a little bit fresh, um, and and having full control over my users' experience, even if it takes a little bit longer to get there. Uh, but sky's the limit. Uh, work with it how you will. Now, you'll also before you get we get started here. I need you need to set up um, Yarn uh, and Grunt. So install those globally. Uh, and if you need a guide from that, just Google how to install uh, Node on my computer. Node comes with NPM, and then you install Yarn globally, and then either with Yarn or with NPM, install Grunt globally. And this, now I'm in my Magento 2 directory, and I can actually run Grunt, uh, even though there's no default uh, set up. Um, so this is sort of the, what it would look like uh, normally. 
Now, for you, you might get an error because you won't have a grunt file. That's because when Magento ships, it ships with a dot sample at the end of your uh, grunt file name, and the same with package.json. So make sure before you try to do anything, you actually remove dot sample from the end of your uh, package.json in your Magento 2 directory, uh, run yarn, just like that, uh, and then it'll install a bunch of files for you, link them together, uh, and then, you're, th then you should be set. Now, at this point, Grunt won't know about your theme, so you have to actually go through, go into uh, the Magento dev directory and dev tools, Grunt configs, go into themes, and then you'll see I have removed the default ones. Don't worry about that, you can leave them if you want. I, don't, I didn't need them there, so I just removed them. Uh, but here are my two themes. Base corresponds to what I want to do, so like, or to what to my template name. So like, say I want Grunt to know my template name as base, then like I can clean my static files here just by calling base, or I can clean uh, pet safe, something like that. And, and that's how Grunt sees them. Uh, the area front end corresponds to the folder directly under the design uh, directory. Uh, for me, it's going to be front end since I'm not messing with the back end uh, theme. The name is your um, namespace, which are these, uh, and then slash, and then base, which is the uh, theme name for me, which is just base. Um, I wouldn't worry about the locale quite yet. That's something you can uh, worry about in the future. Uh, your domain-specific language is going to be less because I don't want to have to deal with uh, anything else at the moment. Um, and then your files is important because these are all the entry files uh, that Grunt's going to look at when compiling less. So um, in the other uh, default themes, I told you they shipped with three files. Well, they're going to ship like this, um, styles m, and then css slash print. That just, now, so Grunt will just see those and be like, oh, these are my entry points. I should create styles-l.css from... Uh, styles dash l dot less, uh, and then spit them out in the appropriate directory for you to, for you to include into into your templates. So that's all this does. And once you save it, now Grunt can see your theme. And so if I go yarn clean put save, oops, should be yarn Grunt clean put save. It cleaned everything without errors, and it's good to go. But now if I do yarn slash uh, blue dolphin it's gonna be like what there's no there's no blue dolphin so um, there you go now moving on um, what is this tool grunt intended to do well what it does uh, is is two things first it tells uh, magento to move all of the uh, static design files from your theme into, not static, your dynamic design files from your theme into the pub static directory. Um, and it does this on when you're on developer mode via sim links. Um, and so you'll see them in, well you won't see them here because it only, Magento will only put them there when you tell it to. Uh, but grunt that clean command I just did, it'll, it'll clean them out for you if you need them. Um, it's loading, so give it a second. There, you'll see. You'll see PetSafe here, and then you'll see all of our themes start up. It's generated the uh, CSS file for us, and we're good to go. So what Grunt does is, uh, it's kind of a wrapper, actually, around a lot of what Magento already does with style sheets. Um, so the way it does it is um, Grunt will actually move less files here into this directory. I believe when you call exec, yeah, and then you can run Grunt less pet safe, for example, or whatever your theme name is, and it'll generate that CSS file for you, rather than having Magento do it. And then if, when Magento starts up and it sees that file, it's not going to generate it for you because it's already there. Now you can do yarn grunt watch, and it'll watch all the files in this directory, 
for you to change them. Or since they're symlinks, you can actually change them, and you should actually be changing them uh, up here. And let's just say background purple. And then when you refresh, we have a purple background. So it's a powerful command for doing things really quickly, or a, a tool for, for iterating on your designs really quickly. Um, and you can even turn on things like uh, live reload, um, and uh, which, by the way, you need this uh, Chrome extension for. I find it a little finicky. It doesn't always work for me. Um, you definitely can't do client-side less rendering with Live Reload um, that I've found yet. Um, so keep that in mind. You have to do the grunt uh, method. Let's try to reload it again and see if I can get Live Reload working for this video. It's connected, but is it going to Live Reload? We will see. Hey, it did. So if you can get it to work uh, consistently, awesome. I, I'm having mixed luck with it. Um, but remember, this is the front end uh, design process for Magento 2 is there's been a lot of work in it, but there's still a lot more work to be done. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily always work uh, as, as well as you would expect it. Now, some things to watch out for. Um, a lot of things in Magento are cached. So it's not always enough to do yarn, uh, grunt, clean, and then your temp template. Uh, sometimes, um, you'll find a problem where if you do that in the var view preprocess, oops, not the temp folder, view preprocess folder, you'll see that this exists, um, which is troubling. I, I don't actually know where this com comes from, um, and sometimes it seems that I have to completely delete everything out of here for my uh, less to work correctly. So keep that in mind if, you, if you're running into problems that it's not refreshing properly. Um, uh, Magento serves up files, static files, with very long cache refresh times on them. Um, I, and I found that that sometimes even happens in developer mode. So make sure you definitely uh, use, when you're using any tool like Chrome DevTools, for example, you have this disabled cache button open or just do hard refreshes. Um, and if you're having uh, more problems, this is where N98 Major Run comes in. Um, and then you can just do a full, uh, what I like to call the nuclear option, uh, cache clean, cache flush, and then I do yarn uh, grunt clean, which will clean, well, let's just have a clean base, yarn grunt clean pet safe, and yarn grunt exec pet safe, which does a clean for good measure, and then it creates the send links again. Uh, and then you want to yarn grunt less uh, pet safe, and then you want to yarn grunt watch. That command, um, well, I messed, I messed up my major on commands, but this command, when you run it correctly, unlike what I did here, um, this will let you, this will completely nuke all the cache uh, that is uh, possible to nuke. Um, and then it'll uh, rebuild the cache using grunt, recompile your less, um, and then it will uh, uh, start the grunt watch process. It's going to take a few seconds to run, so I'm going to let it run. Doing its thing. Making the sim links now. And there we go. Doesn't take too long, uh, but you keep in mind that it, when you add um, files here, um, that process, that step where we're doing uh, yarn, grunt, exec, and then your theme, that's creating the sim links. So if you create a new less file, uh, grunt won't know to sim link that. It's, it still needs that uh, ability built into the watch. Uh, as of the making of this video, it doesn't have that. So you actually do have to turn or close the watch process, yarn, grunt, exec, uh, your theme again, recompile the less, and then start watching again for it to uh, see uh, the, the changes and, and be able be aware of your new file. But 
Um, apart from that, this is a very uh, 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 useful and quick workflow for getting things done. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and uh, look for more soon. Thank you.